Hi, my dear Astro family. Here is a very important video, and that is the ingression of Sedna into the sign of Gemini. So I wanted to talk about this because this is going to be the aspect of the week, and probably this is one of the most important ingression of the century, I would say, because Sedna spends an extreme amount of time in one sign. So I'm going to break that down for you. So if you want to look at where Sedna is in your chart, its astrological number is 90377. Sedna was discovered in 2003, and it has got a 11,000-year orbital period. Average, it spends to 60 to 100 years in one sign. The longest period of, um, uh, it spends approximately about 1,000 years in the sign of Sagittarius, but only 42 years in the sign of Gemini. So Sedna was in the sign of Aries uh, in 1863 to 1967. And then we had the Taurus period come in between 1965 to 2024. And then now we are going to be starting the Sedna in Gemini era. Now, we already had one ingression in 2023, and that happened between 16th of June until the 22nd of November. And then we've got the final entry, which is happening on the 27th of April or 28th of April, depending on where you are, of 2024. So first of all, you might want to be focusing a little bit on that Gemini cusp of your chart for multiple reasons. One of the reasons is because Uranus will follow next year. And you might want to be looking at what was happening in your life between that uh, June and November period, because Sedna revealed what it's going to be transforming for you in the next um, four decades, pretty much. So as I said, it's going to be 42 years while it's in the sign of Gemini. So what is Sedna? First of all, each of the discovery is more of a new layer to the humanity subconscious. So it is giving us pretty much of a new reality of the world. And sometimes uh, these ingressions are the representation that something is happening beyond our own imagination. So clearly in the sign of Gemini, once Uranus goes into that and Sedna becomes kind of comfortable, we're going to see a lot of technological advancements. You cannot imagine that right now. But what is Sedna? A Sedna is a sea goddess, the goddess of animals and marines. Sedna was a spoiled child. She pretty much refused to grow up. She turned down all marriage proposals. And then one day the father got kind of tired of this and accepted a marriage proposal from a stranger in exchange of a fish. And she was given a sleeping potion and got taken away by this stranger. But the stranger revealed his true form. He was actually a crow spirit. He was an evil spirit. And she was trapped on an island. Her father regretted his decision and tried to save her daughter, but the crow sent a huge storm to stop them. The father wanted to save his own life, so he threw his own daughter into the sea. She tried to cling onto the boat, but her father pushed her into the ocean. She sank and she became half human and half a fish. So that would be the mythology behind it. So what Sedna actually represents in your natal chart is the realization of the fact that we cannot rely on anyone. It's father image issues. Often a prominent Sedna would be an indication that a father betrayed you somehow. But also this is about regretting of doing something. We've got that guilt and then we want to turn it around, but maybe it's a little bit too late. Sedna was a spoiled child, so it could represent the spoiled child syndrome as well. And then therefore life is forcing us to grow up. But the major aspect of this Sedna is getting in touch with our spiritual mission. Because 
this tragedy had to happen to her to realize that she could become more what she is living as. And she became a goddess. But often we are victimized in that part of our chart. Now, because Satan spends a lot of time in certain signs. I mean, it spent approximately about 60 years in the sign of Taurus. Don't focus on the sign so much. Focus on the house position. So, for example, Sedna has been in my third house until now, and it's moving into the fourth house. So once it goes into the fourth house, there is the need to realize something about my roots. I'm going to have to turn my roots around somehow to probably make it stronger, being able to put down the roots, enjoying the fact that we belong somewhere. That could be one of the ways how you can play around with this Sedna. Remember, this is a longer period of transit. Okay, so therefore, what's going to be very important here is that you gradually build on something. Also, this could talk to us about a child who is disobedient or a controlling father or how the father is actually manipulating us or how people just manipulate us overall. And it's all about pretty much... Uh, entitlement as well because both parties felt that they had the right to do whatever they wanted this could talk to us about ransom situation often said in a position in our chart is a blind spot we are not able to see we are not accepting the changes we are a little bit you know, kind of stubborn about those it could represent animal related viruses extreme cold weather as well, the victim versus the abuser. It could talk to us about someone who is a diva or someone who is making their money in a dirty way. Even uh, she could represent drug abusers in our chart as well or someone who is blackmailing someone. So getting into those type of situations. Now, why Gemini, Sedna, is going to be interesting? I think on one hand, it is going to show us that the end is coming to our current financial system. And it's going to go through a major upgrade. Now, Gemini is very technological. So probably we entering the era of virtual money, technological approach to everything. It's more to do with computerized knowledge. Computers most likely going to become indispensable. But Gemini is the travel industry as well. So faster travels, advanced technology when it comes to those travel opportunities, for example. And you know what? Uh, Gemini also represents the phone industry as well. So probably we're going to have 7Gs and 8Gs and all those type of things. Gemini represents the brain. So I feel like the brain research is going to take off significantly. The mental health industry is going to grow as well. And therefore, mental health practitioners' role is going to become a lot more, a lot more significant and important. So um, uh, Gemini represents the social media. So I believe the, the current social media system is about to die and something is going to be replacing that. Ne neurological discoveries will be happening, the birth of the alternative world, uh, virtual reality probably going to be kicking off. And I think any of the fish industry or the marine industry is going to be probably somehow at risk as well. So anything to do with water, water-related pollutions, is going to become a major topic in the next four decades. But this is going to get speeded up already once we have got uh, Uranus moving into the sign of Gemini as well. So it's a lot closer than you think. But the whole process is going to take a good four decades, I would say. Now, what's also very exciting that Sedna and Pluto are in trine to each other. Now, this trine started in 2022, February. 
And uh, the higher octave of that is the need to realize that we are selfish and greedy. The lower manifestation of that, that we all have got the desire to have power. But this air connection is an indication that we need to realize that we are stronger together than alone. It's about merging. So probably we're going to see corporations merging, companies merging. Uh, it's all about how to build more of a genuine connection. This is going to be a big topic coming up. But of course, what happens is that currently, I feel like the the connections people are making are not so genuine anymore. So therefore, we're going to see this split in humanity and hopefully we're going to go back and we realize that those genuine connections like, I don't know, 40, 50 years ago was a lot better. Also, this could indicate that uh, we're going to have to let go of certain type of, uh, you know, toxic situations or, you know, Sedna in Taurus you know, brought us food supply issues, resources of earth issues, banking and financial matters, um, a panic buying, supermarkets closed down, big food chains uh, left certain type of countries. The cost of living uh, was rising significantly. So these are all something that is going to be somehow coming to an end or be finding a solution to it or it's going to get intensified so we will see major changes i think this will bring changes in the education industry as well remember that we had the saturn jupiter conjunction 2020 december where pluto got triggered now sedna is triggering that point as well so the education system will change significantly and probably be going to that online field, right? How we communicate, so phone industry, social media, the car industry is about to change quite significantly. I would also would like to mention that Sedna and Pluto will be in trine till about 2027-28. So that's when we're going to start seeing, until then, these major changes. We have got pretty much three years. On top of that, this might be talking about genetic manipulation, maybe the UFOs, maybe new ideologies going to be coming up, new discoveries, surely with planets, space exploration, it's going to be talking to us about maybe the appreciation of our neighborhood more than ever before. Um, you know, just to give a couple of examples here, because, um, you know, when you have got a prominent Sedna, and I would say that a prominent Sedna is when it's on your uh, ascendant, midheaven, sun or the moon, for example. Um very tightly, I would say probably within about three degree, those could become kind of influential people who are going to be changing quite a lot of things um, uh, in, humanity, in humanity. So uh, an example is John Lennon, who had said no right on his ascendant, or we had Audrey Hepburn, Jim Carey, who had uh, said no on the MC, Jennifer Lopez, who has got Sedna on the sun, or George Clooney, who has got Sedna on his moon. Obviously, when you go back and kind of revisit the life story of these people, how can we see Sedna playing a role in their chart as well? Uh, you might want to start thinking about that also. So one of the ways how you find your Sedna is, I gave you the astrological number. You can go on astro.com and once you have put uh, your birth data in, go to the extended chart selection and then go to the uh, common elements and you will find Sedna in the list there. Or you can just enter the astrological number manually into that uh, additional box. So you can do that. So Sedna is where you feel betrayed, 
where you have got rage or resentment going on, where you sometimes feel a bit broken or, you know, she's sunk. So you often feel like that you are getting stuck in a mud and you don't know how to kind of climb out of it. This would talk to you about um, the, the reason of your existence on planet Earth, pretty much. So Sedna in Taurus, you know, if you want to recap on that, I mean, during the time, during this time, you know, we had the capitalism. Money got really monopolized. We had, you know, we the consumption, consumption of people became huge. I feel like it. Uh, it would, you know, but Taurus can... Uh, represent entertainment industry as well to a certain extent so uh, we saw broadway coming in um yeah so those are some of the major you know the cost of living i mentioned already this has become a real big issue when sedna went on to the 29th degree of taurus uh, which is the degree of the weeping sisters and that has been the last three, four years anyway. And we saw the food shortages, right? And we saw the COVID when uh, people were, you know, kind of buying up stuff. And probably this is something that we're going to be seeing a lot more. But I'm really hopeful that with this Pluto Sedna trine, what is going to be happening is that people are going to be able to come together. They might be, by the way, the exact trine uh, between them two is happening in June. After they're just going to be within orb to each other. And I went back and then I looked at what happened with the very first trine as well, by the way. And then Boris Johnson resigned as a MP. Or we had Trump getting arrested, if I'm not mistaken. So we might see these type of things popping up again on social media as well as some similar stories around it. I would also say that uh, this is going to be a period of time when, uh, when um, um, the distribution system is going to be changing quite significantly, such as you know how things are getting delivered. I think we're going to see some major changes around that too. Mental health, you know, I feel like it's so important that everyone is trying to look after their own mental health. I think this is going to be the biggest topic here. Uh, Pluto in Aquarius, Sedna in Gemini, you know, the problem is, I think, or I feel is that because Gemini is all about something that we can read, Right, so the newspapers, the Facebook, the Twitter, and all those type of things. And it is full on fake news. And therefore, we don't know what to believe anymore. So I really hope that this Pluto Sedna Trine is going to help us to kind of stop reading this, or we are going to be a little bit more kind of data driven maybe in a way that we want to check that whatever we have heard or read on social media that we actually going to be checking that out with the facts and this has started blooming actually in the last couple of years in my opinion because there are more and more people who are trying to bust myth online and criticizing other social media influencers and i think it's going to be very important uh, to kind of knock out these people who are spreading, you know, false information such as do not eat spinach because it causes you cancer and all this type of stuff. So I feel like this is going to be improving as well. So with this, all this shift, I feel like things are from 2030 onwards going to look a lot better. You know what? We're going to see probably self-driven cars. Everything is going to be automized in a way, which is a danger as well, because, of course, uh, the human power is very important. I feel like languages will evolve significantly. Um, um, I don't think there is going to be such thing as a universal language, of course, but 
somehow it's going to become more and more important to speak different types of uh, languages, or maybe it's the interpretation of symbols. I mean, robots, you know, unfortunately, are going to be happening, and we're going to see more and more. And I would also say that because we're talking about the air industry here, so the air pollution, the monodioxide and carbon dioxide, and probably something they're going to come up with to kind of help that. Probably this is all about AI, of course, and something to do with um, uh, uh, cloning as well. I feel like that's going to be quite important. Now, I think what the the industrial revolution is around 2026 why do i believe that is because we have got the uranus and Sedna conjunction happening around that time but uh basically we're gonna have already uh some uh they're going to be within orb from about September 2025. And that's an interesting era anyway, because we're going to have the Neptune, uh, Saturn conjunction as well on zero degree of uh, uh, Aries. It's going to be a very, very interesting one. So 26, I think that's a, a revolution in industrial revolution. And we're going to see some mind blowing things so guys thank you very much i hope this helps and i will see you in my next video take care bye, -bye.